judges Zoe Ball, Manoj Maldi and Lachlan Ray are touring the UK to find the Garden of the Year. Today, they're in the south of England, visiting Highgate in London, where owner Camilla has transformed her garden into a tranquil green space, fit for all the family. Oh, oh my, my God. God. We're looking on a glass floor. Is this that is a, extraordinary. There's a room down there. There's a pool down there. Beautiful little courtyard. Oh, nice courtyard, well. courtyard yeah. With the aces. <gasps> and they're changing colour as well. No. How gorgeous is that? Mm. Just that little area down there. Oh, no, <laughs> my, look at that. That wow. is absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely fabulous. It's like a show garden. Isn't it? It's just perfection. I can just see the three of us sat out here in this sitting area, you know, <laughs> having a drink in the evening. And you've got another seating gorgeous, area here for dinner. Mm, it's <gasps> very exciting. Oh, wow, look at that. That <gasps> is incredible. Living you... wall. Yes, yes, and it looks as if it's sweeping round to the side. I think we should go and have a look. I know this is extremely special. I've seen oh, yeah. living walls before, but I don't think I've seen anything quite that spectacular. It's amazing. Look at those formiums that are actually just swinging out. Lovely bud leaves, and I love the fatsy japonicas, the big palmate leaves. This just looks like a jungle that's actually creeping up the walls. It's Beautiful. So that is an extremely impressive specimen. Could you do something on a slightly smaller scale if you had? Absolutely you can, yes. You can have a like a 50 by 50 panel or a metre by metre and just have a single panel and there you have a brilliant living wall. Loving the materials here. Mm. Yes. I love the way this wood has silvered and it ties up with those preformed concrete slabs. Yeah, and it's a gorgeous colour, isn't it? Yeah. Which then ties in with the water feature and that beautiful and that gorgeous piece screen. of art. Yeah. But let's not ignore the plant media. Yeah, of course. It is sublime. And I think, you know, the way things are just spilling over the edges of the hard materials, you know, it's just softening it that little mm. bit. What's more, these foxtail lilies, gorgeous, I think, we just timed our visit perfectly because they are real showstoppers. Yeah. And actually, the planting is quite accessible. You know, you can go to a nursery and actually get these plants quite easily. It feels like waves of the plants. And you've got the Astrantia and the roses, the salvias as you yeah. come up through here. And the pines sort of dotted here, through there, telling that story. Can you feel how this garden is actually growing this way and literally climbing up the house with that living wall? And they've continued the theme as well, up on the, the roof terraces there with obviously planting in pots because there's no available earth. But that's something that somebody could use on a, a small roof terrace or a, a small balcony, you know. It's all working well for me. And just the story continued slightly, the daisies that go all the way up and through, just giving it that kind of wildness, but really beautifully planned. I think we're nearing the end of the garden here. But a whole other area, lawn, mm. lovely place for hanging out, relaxing, sunbathing, really protected so no one can really overlook you. It's such a great garden for socialising, isn't it? You've got the fire pit over there, lovely covered area. If the weather's not so great, football pitch for the kids. Absolutely. And then these seating areas back through. And the planting in this area, again, is, is sublime. What they've done is they've reused plants which we've already seen in other areas of the garden, which carries on a theme. Yeah, over here we've got a bit of a sort of almost woodlandy area to the back of the garden, which is obviously offering privacy and, you know, a, a visual screen to the end of the garden. And next in line is a hidden garden in Ceredigion in the west of Wales. For the past 30 years, Builder Jez has been developing the garden with his wife, Kath. Before we started the garden, it was a field. <laughs> Its freeform layout is navigated through meandering paths interspersed with ponds, naturalistic planting, and quirky contemporary artworks. Oh, Boys, look, this, this looks is just the great. entrance. We are in for such a treat, aren't we? This is just like an adventure playground for gardeners. <laughs> wow, look at this, look at these. <gasps> Primula is gorgeous. So I love many different the kinds of primula. Look at that. I isn't mean, it beautiful? Nature's design. It's, it's just incredible, isn't it? I feel like in The Wizard of Oz, when it goes from black and white, 
and suddenly it's colour, technicolour. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Dorothy, it's like we are not in Kansas anymore. We're in another world. It's absolutely breathtaking. I love the way, you know, looking across this, whilst there's a lot of flower around, I actually don't need any of that. It's all in the texture and the form of the plants. Yeah. It's, it's a very rich tapestry. And as you sort of look back, the house is, is tucked away. Tucked away, yeah. And you hidden. would never know that this was here. No. It's a secret garden. Yeah. See, it is like a secret garden. And what I really do love is all the height that has been created throughout the garden, because actually that is giving that real sort of enclosed, cosy feel in this space as well. I feel quite protected in, in this area. I'm loving this. Yeah. Are these old sleepers? Yes. Yeah. Recycled, repurposed, and it's great because if one of those rots away, you just replace it. We've got some more here, obviously, as well, which could be used as a seat, perhaps. Yeah. Or... And yeah. all the bugs and creatures. Yeah, are exactly love that. You know. And I really like oh, the like. fact that you're you're getting all this growth with the ferns and everything settling in really naturally. Wow. Yeah. There's a great use of. <laughs> old junk, what people might call their junk, junk, but has been used so magically in this garden, isn't it? Which is so sustainable, and that's what we should kind of all be aiming for, really. Who would think <laughs> to do something like that with something from pylons, you know? That is so sculptural, and I love the way it's just winding up that tree. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. And this whole area, isn't it? This carpet of moss that's just beautiful. It's so soft underfoot. So this is utterly natural here, you know, this, this hasn't been cultivated. Mm. I don't think you could cultivate it if you tried, but it's just, you know, it's, it's trapping the moisture in here as well, and you'll, you'll feel there's, you know, a certain tactile softness about oh, it. It's, 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 it's gorgeous. And it, it's quite funny because, you know, in our lawn at home, we're trying to get rid of the moss, but actually maybe we shouldn't try and get rid of it. Uh, that's what I think, you know, are we being too precious? about everything. Actually, if you've got a bit of moss growing in your garden, is it such a bad thing? I, I don't think don't so. Don't think it is, no. 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 I, I think this area actually has got a real sort of minimal Japanese-y feel. I love that little bench there where the timber has been recycled. You've got the bamboo growing here. So I think this space here has got that real sort of oriental feel about it. I could see myself coming in here on a real scorching hot summer afternoon and just sitting under the shade of this tree and relaxing. I yeah. think it's a real asset to the garden. Anne Marie and Andrew's garden measures a modest 50 by 36 feet. With a little self built know how and plenty of enthusiasm, they've tackled all of the renovations themselves. Navigated through tropical winding paths, their garden now includes a terrace, a stream which links two ponds, a gazebo, and nearly 50 different types of trees. I'd not done any gardening before I met Anne-Marie, and so when it came to digging ponds out and planting trees and all plants that I didn't know the names of, it was all daunting, but once you get bitten by the bug, there's no coming back, is there? Pretty little house in a cute little cul-de-sac. Wonder what we're going to find here. Yeah. Oh, boys. Wow. Oh, oh. My goodness me. <gasps> oh, yeah. <Look> at this. <gasps> oh my gosh. That is quite phenomenal. Wow. So, this is this not what place. you're expecting to find behind that lovely house, is no, it? No, not at all. Certainly not. And you can't even see the end of the garden anywhere. Wow. Oh, I'm loving all the textures and everything. Yeah. Mm. This is awesome. Beautiful. Look at the leaves on here. Gorgeous, isn't it? And look, we've got a little seating area already. Oh, I think. Let's take a perch. We must. What a spot. It's Real gorgeous, sun isn't it? trap. Yeah, and you can hear the water. You've got. The sun coming through. I love this. This is gorgeous. Look at the texture. Yeah. I feel very serene immediately. And in a totally different place. It's like we're in another world. I love all the different foliage textures here as well and how the canopy is just rising, rising, rising. 
It's just unbelievable. And this is actually really brave because how many people think about putting a tree smack bang in the middle of the garden, but they've been really bold and put it right there. It's gorgeous. Um, and there's often reluctance to plant trees, but as you can see in here, you know, the, the, the gardener is not being shy whatsoever, no. which I think is wonderful, giving a real element of privacy and given mm. the fact that we're obviously surrounded in houses here, and the foliage is in here, they're absolutely incredible. I mean, just ferns everywhere with yeah. the texture of the, the, the palms here, the cabbage palm, the tracky carpus as well, you know. I'm amazed. They've actually repeated that in a small area. So you have got the tracky carpus, and then you've got this cord line here as well, which is kind of doing that palm effect as well. And then you've got this lovely under canopy of all the ferns around here as well. It's just fantastic. The colours here, you've got all these different tones through. The little hints of colour, a little bit of flower, but very restrained, yeah. which I think is good. Works so well. And I love this. Can you imagine this at night with all those twinkling lights? I bet it's really relaxing. Yeah. I'm really enjoying the use of water through the middle of this garden, the sound you hear, it's, it just creates this very calming atmosphere. I was thinking, actually, if you live in quite a noisy neighbourhood, what a great thing to do, to use water to create serenity mm. and, and calm around you. Really, really well built is what immediately strikes me. All oh, the paving's been well done, this raised bed here that goes into the waterfall and the water features themselves. Fantastic, you know, whoever's done this is quite a talent, actually. In a small garden, it's so easy to home in on smaller dimensions, smaller bits of hard landscaping, smaller plants. But they've been really brave and actually put in big specimen trees. And what that does is it actually makes your garden feel bigger. The judges are visiting a contemporary garden in Cheshire, which is home to architectural designer Ken. He and husband David moved in nine years ago and set about transforming it into a series of different spaces. Spanning five acres, Ken's garden fuses European influences with those from further afield. It flows from patio and formal lawn by the house and steps down through a series of enclosed spaces towards the lake with wildflower meadows and relaxation spots dotted along the banks. Beautiful. Gorgeous. How extraordinary. Isn't it? This pond. Gorgeous. This water feature is absolutely delightful. The sound is pitch perfect, mm. isn't it? Like just... just the right amount of trickle. Yes. 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 Yeah. How relaxing is that? This is <laughs> the view is breathtaking, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Wow. And there's such a gorgeous formality here with the, the hard landscaping, the clipped topiary, which is mm. perfect. Then that's softened by these gorgeous borders on either side of what are immaculate lawns. Wow. Every little area we walk into is so special. Beautiful really, really planting. Beautiful. This area, though, it's not huge, but look at how much you can achieve in such a small space. You know, you've got some seating there. Look at the amount of planting and you've got a sculpture. So even if you have a small space garden, you can actually create as much magic in your own Absolutely, garden. Absolutely, yeah. This is lovely, isn't it? A whole nother area, a yeah. whole nother mood. Mm. It's very Mediterranean in its Very theme. Mediterranean, you know. yeah, absolutely. It's not overplanted, is it? Each little plant has room to shine. I'm loving the seating as well. Those shapes, again, coming from the garden yeah. above, those lovely spheres, everything rounded. Adds a sculptural element yeah. to the garden again, doesn't it? For me, what's really singing, though, is this surface. In flower, quite unusually, what they do is they flower on older wood. So rather than having flowers on the tips of branches, it's producing flowers on the trunk. And these are followed up by obviously these gorgeous pinky red seed pods. That's a wonderful thing. Oh. 
This is the god that just keeps on giving. Look at this. Amazing. <gasps> Epic on every scale, isn't, isn't it? it? It is just divine. Something so dreamy and romantic about a kitchen garden. This has clearly got some traditional features about it, but it's got that little contemporary twist. There is a little bit of something else going on here that lean towards the paradise, Islamic, Moorish gardens. Mm -hmm. The word paradise comes from the old word paradisa, which actually means walled garden, which always used to have a central water feature. But how befitting that this one also has a Rajasthani door. So this is a kitchen garden that's a bit of a culmination of so many different styles, themes and periods. Exactly. It's very impressive. It is. The final garden for the judge's consideration is a Victorian secret garden, a one and a half acre walled oasis with a view of the Firth of Forth in rural Fife. It's owned by retired antiques trader Rini. It's just like a painting. You're looking for color and composition and structure. You know if something's right, because you get a sort of um, a good feeling uh, you get a sort of buzz if it's right. The garden is a densely planted wilderness, rich in colour and texture. It's laden with hidden treasures and unique features, including a listed, partially preserved Mackenzie and Moncour greenhouse, thought to date from the 19th century. Look at this entrance to the garden. Absolutely intrigued about what's inside yep. here. I think we're going to Narnia. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a tangled mass. I love the way it kind of just creates this dome. Incredible. We're going this way. Oh. Just... What are we going to find? Oh. Look at that greenhouse. It's steeped in history, isn't it? It is. It's, you can tell some tales. Yes. If you want a greenhouse, that's, that's the greenhouse so to have. It's just <laughs> beautiful. Wow. Look at the fruit up there. There was no way you could dream of having a crop of grapes outdoors in this part of the country. A greenhouse like this is such a resource, and particularly here in your own northern garden. Look at the way that fern is just actually growing in the framework of the greenhouse. Mother Nature is taking over. Yeah. So there's such beauty in what is actual just dilapidation. It's extraordinary. There's something fabulous about this garden, how it's almost taken over yeah. by the wildness Absolutely. around it. Absolutely. You know, no manicuring required, I don't think. It's, it's not that kind of place, you know. It's yeah. just an utter wilderness. There's a bit of orchestration there, but, you know, it's somewhat chaotic, but I think it's fantastic. Look at the growth. They're getting sufficient water, and you can clearly see that they're happy. There's a lot of plants that are really appropriate to being grown here, you know, in mm -hmm. the Scottish garden. You know, just in front of us here, with the Mechanoxus, yeah. such a glorious thing, the blue poppy. Yeah. You know, it's just one of the finest flowers that you can grow. And unfortunately, there's so many parts of the UK where, you know, you just cannot just... grow these. It's so peaceful here, and the birds are loving this wilderness, aren't they? And it's so important when you're gardening to consider the wildlife in your area. You know, when I talk about design, this is what I'm talking about. Have you noticed how you've got this axis that actually goes all the way up, making sure that they're forcing your eye all the way to that gate, and then you get that beautiful view with all of those golden grasses. I really love this feeling that we're enclosed in the kingdom of this house mm. and this garden, and then we've got this wall all the way around us and then these gateways to what's beyond. Gardens should always have sitting points where you can actually sit down, chill, relax, take the view in, and then move again on your journey. See, even though we're on the edge of this garden, because there's no fence or border, you just feel like it's all kind of owned by the house. And that field, I just want to run through the field. 